Okay, so in front of us, we have a GTX 1080i. This is the uh, Strix by Asus. So, like all the broken cards that we get, we want to first start by checking for a short on the base voltage rails. We're going to put our multimeter in continuity, continuity mode. You know, in continuity mode, if we prop something connected to ground, like ground itself, my multimeter beeps. So, we're going to start with the uh, base voltage rails at the PCI Express slot. I should note that the PCI Express slot, you can expect to find both 12 volts on the first three pins. So we're perfectly good. And then to check 3.3 volts, we started this notch and we go four pins left. Perfectly good. Okay. Now we want to go and check 12 volts at the two external eight pins. So for this, we can just check these two inductors. We're going to start with the top one. And we have a short. Okay. And checking the other one. Perfectly good. So now we want to go to resistance mode and check the voltage rails generated by the card itself. Anyways, so checking five volts. This is the first rail to turn on, by the way. We have a... Uh, 5 ohms, so that's also short. This is, um, we'll get to this in a moment. So now we want to check 1.8 volts. Typically for an Asus Strix and some Asus cards, this will be about, um, 750, believe it or not. Instead of the regular 850 you see on any near reference 1080 Ti. So we have 710. This is, um, pretty low actually, but again, it's nothing to be concerned about. Now we want to check the PEX rail. The PEX rail, I expect to be, uh, about 40 plus, but there is quite a lot of variation in the PEX rail on these Pascal cards. So 90 ohms, perfectly fine. And finally, the memory is over here. And for this, I expect to see, I would say 50 plus. I'm not too sure what the range is for Strix, but 75 ohms is actually quite, um, well, 73 ohms. That's more or less what I would expect to see on a reference 1080i. So that's perfectly good. Okay, so notice that we have a short on both the 12 volt rail and the 5 volt rail. Okay, there are two possibilities here. The first possibility is that we have two separate components that are dead and one of them is causing short on 12 volts and the other is causing a short on 5 volts. This does happen sometimes, but the other possibility is that we have one single dead component that's causing a short on both 5 volts and 12 volts. So, generally speaking, there are not too many components on the board that take both 5 volts and 12 volts. Typically, the uh, components that do take both tend to be um, large ICs. So my suspicion is actually the power stage, um, but if it wasn't a power stage, I'd go for, you know, the 5 volt bar converter, followed by uh, the 1.8 volt and the 1 volt bar converter. And by the way, these are NB671LBs. Generally speaking, what happens is, okay, when you look at these power stages, you know, if you have a short on 12 volts, the first thing you should suspect is a power stage. This is the most common cause of a short on 12 volts on a graphics card, typically speaking. And like I said, this is uh, what I would suspect. So sometimes if you physically inspect these power stages, some of them will have some bubbling on top of the package or there'll be a solder ball leaking out of the side of the uh, package. But sometimes, in some cases, you get, um, well, it's much easier than that, but it's also much worse. In that, in this case, we can actually see which one's bad because when we turn over the board, you can see that um, our dead power stage has actually burned a portion of the PCB off over here. So right off the bat, we can kind of tell that if it's not a capacitor, and I don't think it is, then we likely have um, a dead power stage over here. Anyways, I'm going to confirm this is the dead power stage off camera. In a moment, you'll see, uh, well, we'll see what kind of damage the PCB has suffered. Okay, so you can check out this particular um, MOS power stage is dead. I think this is an IR3555. The way to check it is to put uh, one probe on the output and then the other probe on the um, voltage in. So this is voltage in here on the right and this is the output on the black one. As you can see, it's connected. So yes, it is a dead power stage. But unfortunately, as you can also see, we still have a short on 5 volts and we also have a short on 12 volts. Okay. So unfortunately, we still have a short on 5 volts and 12 volts. I can tell you right now that this is due to a PCB layer short here. So what's happened is the uh, PCB layers themselves for the 5 volt and the 12 volt plane have bridged together. I'm a little bit worried as if they have bridged together, then 12 volts has likely gone down the 5 volt plane and killed a lot of components. But um, um, the more pressing concern is that we need to uh, fix this. So I have to get my drill out and we're going to drill a hole into this uh, board, unfortunately, and likely the power stage that is uh, normally situated over here is never going to run again and it's just going to remain an empty pad. But let me, anyways, let me get ahead. Let me uh, go ahead and do that and we'll see in a moment if the uh, card is any closer to being functional.
Okay, so as uh, you can now see, I've gone ahead and I've, I've drilled a hole into the board where our uh, PCB layer short used to be over here. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we're still short. So I've mo I have my multimeter in diode mode. Let's go ahead and check. Um, I think it was this one that was short. It's been a while since I looked at this card. So we're perfectly good here on this one. Again, perfectly good. And finally, for the uh, 12 volt at the PCI Express slot, I'm checking the shunt on the back, by the way. Again, perfectly good. So we're no, long, no longer short there. Now let's check 5 volts. Are we now short here? Nope, we're not short there either. Okay, so since the card is no longer short, let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, let's see. Do you have V-Core? No, but we still have 1.8 volts, right? Yes. So as you can see, we're missing V-Core. So for a card that's missing V-Core, you want to be checking two things. So you want to be checking your UP9511P um, face controller. So in particular, you want to make sure that it has both voltage in I meant to say VCC and enable um, voltage in is typically 5 volts I think it's connected to uh, that's right there's a capacitor over here so yes we have 5 volts now we want to check enable so enable can be found I think maybe here I should know that enable is actually found on the pad above the one I'm measuring but going forward know that enable was still 0 volts Okay, so as you can see, our enable signal is a little too low. It should be in the ballpark of uh, 2 volts. So basically, I, I can already tell you what's happening. So these, di these two diodes, they're connected to the enable signal. And in particular, well, no, not the enable signal itself. So rather, they're connected to the signal that shorts the signal shorting enable. I have a, a GTX 1070 FTW video where I go through this in a little more depth. Basically, the idea is that enable is uh, joined to a... So the way it works is that enable is joined to, an, to a dual NPN transistor over here. Now, normally what happens is when 5 volt turns on, this sends a signal, 5 volts then sends a signal to this transistor to short enable. Then when 1.8 volts turns on, it then, you know, through a series of other components, then sends a signal to this dual NPN transistor to short the signal shorting enable. Which means that it basically it shorts that 5 volt signal that shorts enable, allowing enable to rise to about 2 volts or 2.4 volts, or sometimes around 1.8, and then by extension the uh, GPU VRM will turn on. So what they do is that they the signal that shorts enable, I meant to say the signal that shorts the signal shorting enable, it's connected to a set of diodes these two diodes and these two diodes are used to perform a very basic check so these diodes they have a uh, two a two cathodes each the idea is that these cathodes are pulled high to about 3.2 volts when everything's good but if something goes wrong that cathode is then about zero volts and current passes from the anode to the cathode in particular the uh, signal that shorts the signal shorting enable is then pulled from the anode to the cathode, pulling it low, so that it no longer shorts the signal shorting enable, and by extension, enable, enable gets shorted. So we need to check, basically the gist of it is that we need to check um, these four pins, the cathode ends of these two diodes, which are, I think, BAS76Ws, maybe, or 70, or 7 I, I don't know, whatever it is, I'll link in the description. So let's check uh, these four pins, and we'll see what's wrong. Okay, turning the code on. Okay, let me just check um, the cathode closest to the uh, PCI Express connector, and then I'll keep going back towards this end of the, of the connector. 3.2 volts? Yes. Going to the next cathode? 3.2 volts? Oh, 1.8, that's still fine. Okay, going to the next one? 3.2 volts? Yes. And finally, the last cathode? 22... 220 millivolts. Okay. So, we have uh, something that's too low. So what's happening is that um, our enable is being, sh well, the signal that's supposed to short, the signal shorting enable, is being shorted to ground. And I can tell you what component is actually shorting it. It's uh, a little bit obvious if you were paying attention to the board. So the signal that's, sh that's uh, currently causing enable the GPU VRM to not turn on is actually, um, let me see, this component here. So like I was saying, this is an INA3221. This is the uh, power management IC. If this detects something wrong, it can... Um, stop the GPU VRM, VRM from turning on. So you may notice that there's quite a bit of corrosion around here. So I should note that generally speaking, corrosion around an INA3221 is rare unless the card is a G Strix card. You know, it's this is actually surprisingly common on a lot of Strix 1080 Ti's. I'm not too sure why. You know, maybe uh, all maybe all the owners run AIOs and they just leak. But I suspect that's not the case. But anyways, we have to uh, fix this. So I. 
since I don't get to cover too many um, repairs relating to INA3221, I'm only going to fix it just enough to get the GPU VRM to turn on, turn on so that we can see the other faults that uh, can occur when there's something wrong or with the, either the INA3221 or the components around it. Alright, so as you saw, we um, have a problem with our INA3221. In particular, this particular chip here is responsible for uh, shorting enable. So the way this chip works, it has a uh, power valid pin, PV. I think this is a uh, pin, I, I don't remember the name, but I'll of course link the uh, part for this INA3221 in the description. So basically um, it has a power valid pin and that power valid pin according to the datasheet goes high when it senses at least 10 volts in all three channels. So what we need to do is we need to check um, the both sides of this capacitor to see if they're both 12 volts both sides of this capacitor and both sides of this capacitor here. So let's go ahead and do that. If we if we have lower than 10 volts, we also have a problem. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the one closest to this side of the board here, and then I'm gonna go to the one in the closest to the middle, and then the one to the uh, towards the IO shield, or IO bracket, or display bracket. So starting with the capacitor on the very right, zero volts on one end, on the other side, again, zero volts, okay? Let's start with, let's go to the capacitor in the middle. That's 12, that's good. And now to the other side. 12, that's good. Okay, now finally going to the capacitor on the left. On one end we have 12.3, that's fine. And on the other end, 11.8. So, it looks a little low to me, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so our problem is that on this capacitor here, we have uh, zero volts on both sides. So there are these two resistors right next to these, this capacitor. I can guarantee you that they're uh, open line. They should be about 20 ohms each. So I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go ahead and place them off camera and then in a moment we'll see if it's any more functional. All right, so I replaced uh, those two uh, resistors. I should note that I actually um, pointed to the wrong one earlier. So the two resistors that I replaced are, so like I said, it's um, this resistor here, this is supposed to be 20 ohms, and this resistor here, which is supposed to be 20 ohms. Um, I should note that there's still, of course, some damaged components around here. I kind of just want to leave them as is so you can see how they uh, affect the board and affect the graphics card and its functionality. But of course, you know, if uh, there's nothing else, I'll just replace them off camera. Anyways, let's go ahead and try to boot the card and see if it's any more functional. Okay, so I should know that we want to be checking two things. First, we want to check if we actually have the V-Core and by extension other later voltage rails. And then secondly, we want to make sure that, um, we want to see how this affects the circuit. So the fact, I, you know, obviously I had to dig out the, a hole in the PCB to um, remove the shorted PCB layers, but I'm also kind of curious how it affects um, the card's ability to function. So because it's because it affects uh, this particular power stage, we'll get to this, um, we'll have to check that this one in particular powers on. Okay, so turning the card on, let's see. Do we have V-Core? And we do, 845. That's a, definitely a good sign so far. And better yet, we have a bio splash screen. There we go. So I should note that we're not done yet. There's still one more thing I need to check. So as you remember, I uh, dug a hole in the PCB up over here on the other side. And we, need, we now need to confirm that this power stage actually powers on. So I'm, I'm not gonna say that because it, just because it powers on that it's actually functional, but I do wanna check this. So we're gonna go to the, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna measure its switching frequency. For this particular power stage, I think the, I actually don't know what the switching frequency is, maybe 300 kilohertz, about there. But anyways, let's go ahead and measure it. So on our working power stage, random one, we have 500 kilohertz, but on this top one, 500 kilohertz. So, as you can see, the power stage does turn on. So let's put the cooler on and, well, see if the card has any more problems, which I'm hoping it does, by the way. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, card's currently on. If we look at the screen, it is, uh, it, it can at least install drivers, but as predicted, it has a new issue. In particular, you'll notice if we zoom in, 
Okay, so if you look at the uh, GPU clock, I'm not sure how visible it is, but it's stuck at 139 megahertz. In fact, this might be better. So like I said, the uh, GPU clock is at 139 megahertz. Now, given that the card is at idle, this would normally not be a concern. But if we look at the uh, board power draw, you'll notice that the card thinks it's pulling 400 watts. In particular, it thinks it's pulling 390 watts to the uh, PCIe slot. So this is, um, I'm actually really glad I have uh, this particular error. I've been uh, waiting about half a year to cover this kind of issue. In fact, actually, no, no, no. Let me show you what the issue really looks like in-game in particular. So, you notice that at um, idle, it's 139 megahertz. Well, if we, uh, if we try to run a game, you'll notice it actually stays at 139 megahertz, which, and you'll see this in a moment. Okay, so as you can see, if we zoom in, the card is running game. Yet, if we look at the... Uh, GPU clock is stuck at 139 megahertz, and again, the power draw through the, just according, according to the card itself, the power draw through the PCIe slot is 400 watts, which of course is 100% false. Now let's actually take the uh, card apart and discuss why we have a 400 watts as a reading and how we can fix this 139 megahertz um, fault. Okay, so as you saw, this card suffers from the rather famous 139 MHz bug. What I mean is that under load, the GPU core clock stays stuck at 139 MHz. So I've been waiting a very long time to cover this issue. I uh, nearly, th this actually would have been my, uh, this issue in particular would have been my third video. Well, actually no, I should say third video after I restarted taking my channel seriously again, but um, the guy who wanted to send in the card for repair, he uh, wanted to pay me an exposure and I told him to fuck off. So anyways, this um, 139 megahertz bug is gen generally related to the power consumption. Anyways, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the INA3221 chip on the back is responsible for, power, for um, calculating the power consumption. If the INA3221 thinks you're too, pulling too much power, let's say through the PCIe slots over here or through one of the two 8 pins, it will downclock the GPU as a safety mechanism, mechanism so that it's, you know, not pulling 500 watts and getting so hot that it cracks, basically. So, anyways, the, the reason why we have this 139 megahertz bug is because the, the INA3221 calculates its power consumption using both, let's say, the shunt resistor at the PCIe slot, which in this case is actually the offending 12-volt uh, rail, and it uses a pair of 20-ohm resistors over here. They connect to uh, both ends of sh the shunt resistor, and they help the INA3221 calculate the power consumption. Now, as you may have seen, I think I think you will have seen, um, the power, reported power consumption of the PCIe slot, according to the card, was 400 watts. Obviously, it's not actually 400 watts, the card will be on fire, but it doesn't change the fact that there's a fault. So, what we can do in this case is we can actually just measure the um, voltage on a... I'll just show you. So, I'll, I'll measure the voltage on the, this capacitor on this end, and then this capacitor on this end. At idle, they should basically both have the same voltage, but as you'll see in a moment, they have uh, differing values. Heavily differing values, I should say. Okay, so let's go ahead and measure that capacitor. So, on the top end, closest to PCIe connector, I mean the A-pin, so we have 12.18, perfectly normal. But on the other end, we have... 11.78 or 8, 1. Okay, so that voltage difference is a little bit too large, and I can tell you exactly why. The reason why the voltage difference is so large, and oh, by the way, the way um, the power consumption works is that the larger the voltage dif the difference is on that capacitor, the um, higher power consumption the car thinks it's consuming, or at least that's how it's supposed to work. So anyways, anyways, so the problem is actually, again, these resistors, so I think it would be... So like I said, the, the capacitors in question are over I'm not, over here and over here. They're supposed to be 20 ohms each. The one up top over here is about 14 kilo ohms. The one at the bottom is about 110 ohms. So we have to replace them both. I'm going to do this off camera as well as um, maybe some other components if I think they're faulty. I should note that I ended up just replacing basically every component in that area due to the corrosion. But if you just needed the card to work, replacing those two resistors would have been enough in this case. And then we'll put the card back together and stress test it. Okay, as you can see, the uh, card's running game. At this point, it's um, I can tell you it's perfectly functional. So the lesson for this video is, there's a couple ones. Firstly, be very careful with cards that don't have a fuse. You know, a lot of Pascal cards and even just modern Strix cards don't have a fuse. It's disappointing because when the uh, MOSFETs or power stages die, they burn a hole in the board. And as you saw, you have to drill into the board itself in order to remove some PCB layer shorts. 
The other lesson is um, if you have, let's say, a card with, you know, stock at 139 megahertz, you may want to consider the resistors or the capacitors around the INA3221 chip or even the INA3221. You know, generally speaking, errors relating to this chip is generally quite rare, rare unless you're dealing with, let's say, a Strix card, in which case it becomes somewhat more common. Other common failures with Strix cards are um, rusting around the PCIe brackets, bending the PCB, catching fire as you saw. But anyways, I hope you learned something watching this video. If my channel or my videos have helped you out, consider becoming a patron. You know, links in the description. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.